With the Stamp Tuesday holiday ending on the 1st of October, that got me thinking, was it actually useful? Or did we leave an estimated £4.7 billion of taxpayer money on the table? I'm going to give you a timeline of the holiday, then discuss some of the arguments that it was successful, and some saying it had little impact. So let's get into it. Hello people, I'm Jim. Welcome to the channel. I'm a property investor who's documenting my journey to financial freedom from my day job. I'll be breaking down everything to do with property investing, investing in general, and getting a better grip on your personal finances. So if you're like me and want to grow your wealth, then please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you know when I post new videos. So what is stamp duty? Well, it's simply a tax you pay when you buy property or land. And as of the 1st of October, which is when the holiday ended, if you're purchasing a residential property over £125,000, you will pay it. And if you're purchasing non-residential land and properties over £150,000, you will also get the privilege of paying for it as well. But if you're a first-time buyer and purchasing a property under £500,000, you will not have to pay any stamp duty, which is always a Brucey bonus. Luckily, I have never had to pay it, but when I purchase my first investment property, I will have to. And looking at some of the numbers on my deal analyzer, it hurts. And it's certainly a few grand that I would rather I didn't have to spend. So way back in the grim days of July 2020, the stamp duty holiday was introduced in order to help buyers whose finances were affected by the illness. And it was also seen as a good way to help the housing market stay afloat during an uncertain time. It was due to end in March 2021, but the Chancellor took the decision to extend it until the end of June and then again until it was completely phased out on the 1st of October. So from the 1st of July, the Chancellor chose to phase the rates back in with you paying 12% if you purchase a property over 1.5 million, 10% from 925,000 to 1.5 million, 5% from a quarter of a million to 925,000, and then nothing below a quarter of a million. Then from the 1st of October, it was back to the same levels as it was before the holiday was introduced, meaning the 12, 10, and 5% values all stay the same, but you'll be charged 2% between 125,000 and a quarter of a million, with any purchase under 125,000 being exempt from the tax. So let us talk about why the government wanted to introduce the stamp duty holiday. They wanted to stimulate the housing market and to increase expenditure on goods and services related to housing transactions. Like much of the quantitative easing the UK government put in place, it was there to help create and sustain jobs, particularly as the country was coming in and out of lockdowns. So after some research for data about property transactions over the last few years, I came across this report by the Family Building Society in partnership with the London School of Economics. On the graph, we can see how transactions have changed over the last two years. So let's go through their analysis together, and like always, if you wanna check this out, please have a look at the link in the description below. During 2019, property transactions in England vary between 66,000 and 93,000. But once the figures are seasonally adjusted, there was surprisingly little variation, suggesting an average of around 80,000 transactions per month. The first three months of 2020 were somewhat lower than that. Stamp duty holiday was announced on the 8th of July 2020, but could have hardly affected the July transaction figures significantly. In August, there was still little direct evidence of the stamp duty holiday impact. However, by September, the transaction rate was running at 2019 levels, and in each of the next two months, transactions were running around about 10,000 above 2019 rates. As originally designed, the scheme was due to end at the end of March 2021, and unsurprisingly, the highest levels of transactions were in December, February and March 2021. Transaction levels were almost 30% higher in December 2020 as compared to December 2019, 50% higher in the February 2021 than February 2020, and 100% higher in March 2021 than in the same month in 2020. Looking at the totals for 1920 and 2021, the higher March 21 figures pull the annual financial year numbers up to just above a million transactions. And these are properties selling for £40,000 plus, as compared to the pre-pandemic 1920 figures of just below 1 million. So by April 21, one could argue that the system was back on track. The April 21 provisional figures suggested that transactions were still above 19 rates, but the estimated figures for May 21 are back to 19 levels. The April figures at least probably included sales that would have not completed before the first deadline, but did go through in the extended time. However, the time taking to complete sales, especially when there was change involved, suggests that June's transactions will not reach the levels attained in March. 
The statistics show that transactions had started to rise well before the stamp duty holiday could have had any impact and that the year's holiday at least helped the market to match pre-pandemic levels. So that is certainly a tick in the box for keeping the housing market stimulated. During this period, as there's been lots of activity in the market, with it peaking at above normal rates when compared with 2019, but broadly coming back to normal level. When it comes to why people have moved house, I believe there are three main reasons. First, the pent up demand from all the different lockdowns, which has delayed many moves. People have had changing property requirements, largely due to the pandemic, with people wanting to move away from cities and purchase more space, including more outside space. And finally, the stamp duty holiday, which arguably made it easier to move and change people's attitudes towards it. Importantly, the average amount people spend on moving and on their new house is £16,000 per transaction. And when you spread this across 140,000 transactions, that would generate a total expenditure of 2.2 billion, give or take a couple of hundred million here or there. So again, all this has a trickle down effect on the market and all the connected industries to buying a house. So this is something certainly the government will be happy with. Now, studies have also shown that if you stamp the subscribe button, it will improve your life by 100%. I am joking, of course, but I am on a quest to purchase a Tesla from the money I make on YouTube, and I need your help to get me there. So please stamp the subscribe button and get me a step closer to that car. Now, perhaps the best argument against the stamp duty holiday comes from the Resolution Foundation, which is an independent think tank focused on improving living standards for those on low to middle incomes. Now their research focuses on the impact which the stamp duty holiday had on house prices. Their research has shown that house prices have risen significantly in other comparable countries over the past year, with them saying figure four supports the view that there have been other equally, if not more powerful forces at play in the UK housing market over the past year other than the stamp duty holiday. Here we document house price trajectories in five other developed economies over the pandemic period, as well as the UK, and show clearly that we are no outlier when it comes to recent house price performance. Of course, there have been stimulus measures in each of these countries too, but the similar experience of comparable countries when it comes to house prices suggests we should look at more common factors, such as historically low interest rates globally and changing housing preferences in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis, for large parts of our explanation of recent trends. With their overall conclusion being, overall then, our critique of the transaction tax holiday nationwide is less that they have been a dominant force pushing up house prices over the past year, and more that they have been not required given the other drivers of activity in the market. But there are still some real costs attached to the decision. In particular, the Office for Budget Responsibility estimates that the stamp duty holiday in England and Northern Ireland alone will see the government forego around 4.7 billion of tax revenues in 2021 and 21-22. Much needed cash as we come out of the COVID-19 crisis. Finally, at a more human level, the house price surge of the past year has left many aspirational first-time buyers even further away from realizing their home ownership ambitions and contributed a wide and absolute difference in wealth. So now my opinion on all of this. I think overall stamp duty has not impacted house prices, as you've seen other countries in the world have massive growth in their property markets, and they did not have similar tax relief like this. But I do think when it was introduced that the governments, like the rest of the world, were at panic stations and were trying to keep every single industry afloat. Even though there was a pickup in demand, anecdotally, I think it had an impact on people. If you were thinking about downsizing or moving into your forever home, a discount like a stamp duty holiday might be the final thing to convince you to make the jump. And actually, I think from a social mobility point of view, it might have given the next generation of people an opportunity to buy bigger family properties, which is probably a good thing. But on the other hand, the only advantage first time buyers had was taken away from them. And house prices have gone up so much that they've been priced out of the market which I'm sure that's something the government will have to deal with again down the line. I'm sure if you asked anyone in the government, they would count the stamp duty holiday as a success, as the property market has been booming for a while now, and they would love to take some credit for that. But personally, I think they could have probably ended it at March 2021, and it would have made little difference. But like with governments taking credit for anything, even if it has nothing to do with them, trying to get two economists to agree on anything is also a difficult task. So often people have their own viewpoints and try and find data which just backs this up. 
So I take a lot of these reports and research with a big pinch of salt. But with all this stuff, there are so many moving parts, it's actually quite hard to quantify everything. So that's why I like to look at a wide range of stuff to open me up to new ideas, even if I don't necessarily agree with them, and then try and form an opinion with the understanding that I could actually be wrong. But that's my two pennies worth. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments. Was the Stamp Tuesday holiday a waste of time or do you think it actually helped people out? Do not forget to do your bit for my Tesla by subscribing to the channel. And if you want to know the five hottest places to invest in 2022, check out this video now. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.